In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this procedural mud brick wall material in Blender. If you'd like to help support me and also purchase the tutorial files, then you can get that over on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. And you can also check out my Blender procedural material packs if you'd like to purchase more of my procedural materials. Or if you'd like to learn how to create all of my procedural materials, then you can check out my procedural material tutorial playlist on YouTube. I'll have all the links in the description. And then I also wanted to thank this video's sponsor, Sketchfab. Sketchfab has a 3D model store where you can purchase 3D models and assets. You can preview the models in Sketchfab's online 3D model viewer. Use the model inspector to preview the wireframe, matte cap textures, and more before you purchase. You can also upload your own 3D models on the platform, and you can even apply to sell your own 3D models. Check out Sketchfab with the link below. All right, so let me just show you what I have in the 3D space. So I just pressed Shift A and I added a cube because I thought it would look cool to add it on a cube. I tabbed into edit mode and then I pressed control B to manually add a bevel. And then I scrolled my mouse wheel to subdivide the bevel. And then I just clicked to place that. Now I'm also going to be using the displacements in the node editor. So I do want this to be pretty detailed. So I'm going to press control R to add a loop cut. And then I'm going to type in 80 for 80 and then I'll press enter. And then I will also right click so it hops back to the center. And then I'll also do the same thing over here. So over here, I'm going to press control R. I'll type in 80 eight zero and then left click and then right click so it hops back into the center and then one more time back and forth so i'm going to press Control r and then type in 80 and then enter and then right click so that way we have a very subdivided and detailed cube i'm going to rotate this cube over kind of bring it over there let's go into the camera view I'm just going to kind of scale this down and bring it over so that we can see three sides and then also using the object context menu i'm going to shade it smooth then i'm also going to press shift a and i'm going to go right down here and add an icosphere because I also like to add procedural materials to spheres. And then right behind me, if you click on the add icosphere setting, I'm going to turn these subdivisions to seven. So that way it's pretty smooth and subdivided. And then I'll also shade it smooth. Then I can also bring this over and kind of scale it a little bit. And I think I'll scale this up a little bit. Now for lighting the scene over here on the world, I added in this forest slope 1k HDR. And this is from polyhaven.com. So it's a free HDRI. I'll have the link in the description if you'd like to download the same HDRI that I'm using. So I just added the HDRI in as an environment texture. And then I also added this light right here. So this is just a plane that has a subdivision surface on it. And then I also gave it an emission material with a strength of 50. And that way you can see we have some nice bright lighting shining down on those objects. Now to get the displacement to work, you can go right up here to the render properties and then make sure you're using cycles because the displacements in the node editor will not work in Eevee. So make sure you're using cycles. Now you could use the adaptive subdivision if you want to, but I'm not going to do that in this video. So I can just leave the feature set set to supported. Now to make the displacements work, we need to go down here to the material properties and we need to add a new material. So I'm just going to click on new and I can just call this mud brick wall. And then I'm also going to click right here and drag and I'm going to drop the material on both of these objects. And then the last thing that we need to do right down here under the settings under the surface, if you want to use the displacement and then on the displacement right here on this material, you need to change it from bump to displacement and bump. And that way it'll actually work with the displacements. And then I will also be using the node wrangler add on in this video. So if you don't have that turned on, you can click on edit and then open up the preferences. And then if you search for the node wrangler under the add ons tab, you can just check mark the node wrangler add on. All right, so I'm going to start off by pressing shift a and I'm going to search for a Voronoi texture, I'm going to drop the Voronoi right down here. And then using the feature from the node wrangler, I can control shift and then select different nodes. Now to make this look like brick, I'm going to click on the F1 and I'm going to change this to distance to edge. Now this doesn't look very much like mud bricks. So to make it look more like mud bricks, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a noise texture and let's drop the noise texture right here. And then using the other feature from the node wrangler, I can select a node and I'm going to press control T and that's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. And then I don't need the mapping. So I'm going to click on the mapping and I'll press X to delete it. So I now want to take the object and I want to put the object into the vector on the noise texture. So now I can take the color and I'm going to put the color into the randomness of the Voronoi texture. That is going to distort the randomness. And now you can see that looks much more like random bricks. So to make it look even better, I'm going to turn the detail all the way to the max, which is 15 on the noise texture. And that's going to add 
add more detail. And then also I'll turn the scale to like a 13. And now you can see that is looking very nice. Let's also change the scale of the Voronoi. So I'm going to change the scale of the Voronoi to like a 19 so that there are much more bricks. And then I'm also going to turn the noise texture roughness up to a 0.62 and you can see that just adds a little bit more roughness there and a little bit more detail. You can see if I start to turn it down it just looks a bit more boring but then as you turn that roughness up it just looks a little bit better. So that is looking good but I don't want it all to be bricks because I want there to be some patchy areas where it looks like there's more mud or dirt on the wall. So to do that I'm going to take this noise texture and I'm going to press shift to duplicate it and I'll drop the noise texture right down here and then I can plug the object up to the vector on the noise texture and then I can control shift and select it to preview it. So I'm going to turn the roughness to a 0.58 so a little bit lower and then I'll also turn the scale of this one down to like a 5. So I now want to mix these together, so I'm going to press Shift A, and I'm going to search for a mix RGB, and we can mix both of these together. So I'm going to drop this right here, and then I'll take the factor of the noise texture, and I'll put that into color 2, and then I'm going to take the distance from the Voronoi, and I'm going to put that into color 1. And then I can Control, Shift, and click on this to preview it. Now I don't want this to be set to mix, so I'm going to click on this, and I want to go right down here, and I want to change this to add, because I want to add them both together. And then I want to turn the factor all the way up to 1. Now that isn't looking very good, it's just making everything look more white, so I need to make this noise texture more contrasty. So I'm going to press Shift A, and I'm going to search for a color ramp, and let's put the color ramp right here between the factor and color 2. So now I can just change the colors and make it more contrasty. So I can start to drag this out, and you can now see that it's much more contrasty and then I'm also going to bring this out as well and make it a little bit stronger so now you can see that it looks like there's some little bits of mud and dirt on that brick wall all right so that's very good and this is the base for our displacement so let's now plug this into the displacement so I'm going to take this color and I'm going to plug it into the displacement on the material output but then we need to actually add a displacement node to convert it to displacement data so I'm going to press shift a and I'm going to search for the displacement node we're going to drop the displacement node right here between the color and the displacement and then I can just kind of bring it down here under the principle. Now I actually don't want this to be going into the normal, I want it to be going into the height because this is color data so it needs to go into the height, it can't go into the normal. Now it's looking way too strong right now so let's go ahead and fix that. So on the mid-level I want to change that to zero because we don't want any mid-level and then on the scale here I'm going to change the scale to a point. 0 to 5. So it is very subtle, but if you zoom in here, you can see that where those little bits of mud are, they're popping out. And then right here, you can see that the bricks are going back in where it's darker. So let's control, shift, and click on the principled BSDF. And then I do want this to look pretty rough. I don't want it to look like it's wet or shiny. So on the roughness here, I'm going to turn the roughness up to like a 0.7 so it's more rough. Now it's just white right now, so we need to give it some color. So I'm gonna press Shift A and I'm gonna search for a color ramp and let's just drop the color ramp right here. So I now wanna take the noise texture and I wanna take this factor and I wanna put it into the factor of the color ramp. So we can use this noise texture to create some random colors for the shader. So I'm gonna take this color and I'll put it into the base color. So I'm first going to click on the black tab here and I want to make it a very dark brown. So I'm going to click on the black here and I'm going to make it a bit brighter and then make it a strong brown color. And if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using, you can click over on the hex value and you can type in a hex value of 19. 1109. So that is the color that I'll be using. Now let's also click on this one, and this one I want to be a much lighter brown. So let's click on the color. We're going to make it a little bit darker, and we're going to make it kind of an orangey color. And again, if you want to use the exact same color that I'm using over here on the hex value, you can type in B47D50. And then I want to add one more color in here. So I'm going to hold down the control key, and I'm going to click right here underneath that G. Um, so I'm going to make one more darker color right here. So I'm going to click on this color and I'm going to make it a bit darker and a bit more brown. And if you want to use the same exact color that I'm using over here on the hex value, again, you can type in a hex value of 925B39. So then if you control shift and click on this, you can see we have some very nice colors and that's looking quite nice on our material. Now I do want to add some more information to this color, so I'm going to press Shift A and I'm going to search for a mix RGB, and let's drop the mix RGB right here. 
So I'm going to put the color ramp into color one. And then if I control shift and click on this ad here, I want to take this data, this information, and I want to plug it into color two. And then I can control shift and click on this. And then I don't want it to be set to mix. I want to click on this and I want to change it to darken. So now you can see that those cracks in between the bricks are darker. And then I'm also going to turn the factor up to like a 0.6. So it's a little bit darker. You could keep turning it up, but I don't want it to be fully black. So I'm going to turn it to a 0.6. So it's just a bit darker. And then I want to add one more value into this color. So I'm going to take this darken and I'll press shift to duplicate it. We're going to drop it right in here between the color and the base color. We'll just drop it right there. And then if I control shift and click on this, I want to take this data and I want to plug that in as well. So this is the brick texture. So I'm going to take the distance and I'm going to plug that into the factor of this second mix RGB so I can now control shift and click on this to preview it and then I still want it to be set to darken but I want to take color 2 and I want to make that fully black and you can see as I start to turn it down now you're able to see it's darker right there but then it's a bit lighter right there so let's control shift and click on that to see what it's looking like and you can see that looks a lot better and it has a lot more detail so we are almost done with this material but I do want to add two levels of detail in the normal so I'm first going to take this ad right here I'm going to take this ad the color and and I'm going to put that into the normal. Now I need to press shift A and I'm going to search for a bump node because we need to convert this to normal data because this is color data, but then this is normal data. So we need to convert it to normal data. So I'm going to use the bump node and just put the bump node right in here in between it. You can see there's some shading issues there. Everything looks black, but I'm going to take this wire and I'm going to put it into the height instead of the normal. And now it's converted to normal data and it looks very bumpy. Now I don't want it to be bumpy all over the place. I just want it to be bumpy here and there. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for another color ramp and let's drop the color ramp right in here between this connection. So right before it goes into the height on the bump. So if I control shift and click on this, you can see what it looks like. So if I start to drag this white tab out, you can see it's going to make everything much more white and blown out. And then I'm also going to drag this black tab out a bit more just to make those cracks a bit stronger. So I'm going to bring the black tab to about here and then I'll bring the white tab even closer. So we now have that map right there. And if I control shift and click on the bump, you can see that's what it's doing. So it's making those parts in between the bricks stronger. So if I control shift and click on that, you can see now we have that nice bump right in there digging into the material. All right, so I now just want to give one more layer of noise all over the material. And so I'm going to use this noise texture right here. So I'm going to take this bump node and I'll press shift D to duplicate it. Let's drop it here. And then I can plug the normal into the normal. So we can now plug more information into this height value right here. So I'm going to take this factor from this noise texture and I'm going to plug that into the height. Now, when we do that, it looks way too strong. That is very strong. So let's make it less strong by turning the strength value right here to like a 0.4 so now that is much less strong it's still pretty rough but it's not too crazy so I'll just give this a render and we can take a look at the final thing and there we have it so there is the finished procedural mud brick wall so I hope this tutorial was helpful and thank you for watching and again if you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel then you can purchase these finished procedural materials on my Gumroad store and also if you join my patreon then you'll have access to the tutorial files as well you can also check out my blender procedural material packs if you'd like to purchase more of my procedural materials and if you'd like to watch more procedural material tutorials then you can also check out my blender procedural material playlist on youtube all the links are below so thanks for watching and i hope to see you in a future tutorial